Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're wrapping up our integration series in Calculus 1, so we're going to be going over some applications of integration. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So the first one I already have a video on, but it's position, velocity, displacement, distance, and acceleration. So when we move down the list, so when we move from position, velocity, to acceleration, we are differentiating it, right? It represents the rate of change of each. When we're integrating, we're going to do the opposite, so we're going to move up. So displacement is when we integrate between a and b of our velocity function. It represents the distance between the start and the finish. So if a runner runs out 10 miles and then they run back 2 miles, they have a displacement of 8 miles, right? That's between their start and finish. That is different from the total distance. So if they run out 10 and run back 2, they have a total distance of 12 miles. And so that's when we have to make it absolute value. Because when they're moving backwards, it represents a negative area, right? And so when we take the absolute value of that, it becomes positive, And we can just tag it on for the total distance. So let's talk about an example. We have a jogger running with velocity in miles per hour of um, that function right there between 0 and 3 hours. So for part A, we want to graph the velocity function. And we're going to determine when the jogger moves in the positive and in the negative direction. So here, I already graphed it out for us. And we're going to talk about when is the runner going positive and when is the runner going negative. So remember, the velocity represents the rate of change of the distance, right, or the position. We have right here that the velocity is positive, which means the position has a positive rate of change. Which means it must be moving in the positive direction. So here we have that the jogger runs in the positive direction. And here we want to actually talk about the interval that this happens. And this is going to be between t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1 hours, right? Because then we move into the negative area. So here our velocity is negative, which tells us that our position has a negative rate of change. And that tells us that our jogger must be moving in the negative direction. So if you think of it as an out and back, when they start out, they're going in a positive direction, and when they turn around, they're going in a negative direction, right? And this is going to be starting at one hours, and then we're going all the way to three hours, right? So that right there answers part A, so we'll move on to part B. We want to find the displacement of the jogger in miles on these different time intervals. So 0 to 1, 1 to 3, and 0 to 3, and we're going to talk about what that means. So remember, when we find displacement, we are integrating our velocity function. So for us, our velocity function is 2t squared minus 8t plus 6, and we're integrating this in terms of time. So this is going to represent the start to the finish between 0 and 1 hours, whatever that distance is. And just looking at our graph, that's going to be the distance that they're moving in the positive direction. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to first take the antiderivative. So here we end up 2t cubed divided by 3 minus 8t squared divided by 2 plus 6t, and we're integrating this between 0 and 1. If you wanted to, you can simplify that to a 4, right? And when I plug in 0, those, you know, all go to 0. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We get 2 thirds minus 4 plus 6. That is equal to 2 thirds plus 2. So you can think of it as what, 2 and 2 thirds, or you can think about it as 2.667, or what, 8 thirds, whatever, you know, whatever you want to think about it. So first, the jogger runs um, 2.667 miles in the first hour, right? Because we are integrating between um, 0 hours and 1 hour, so that in the first hour they go 2.667 miles. So now let's take our next interval. We're wanting to integrate between 1 and 3 of our velocity function. So we already integrated this, right? So we end up getting um, 2t cubed divided by 3, and that became minus 4t squared plus 6t. But now we're integrating between 1 and 3. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. And we already plugged in 1, right? When we plugged in 1, we ended up getting a value 2.667. So I just used a result from the previous thing that we just found. So let's go ahead and plug this in. One of these 3's cancel. So we get 2 times 3 squared. 2 times 9 is equal to 18. We get minus 4 times 9, which is 36. And then plus 18, minus 2.667. 
And so notice here that this whole thing is actually going to go to zero and we get a result of negative 2.667 miles. Now in real life, you can't run negative miles, but your position can be negative. They go out 2.66, that must mean they're going backwards 2.66. So that's what it means for your distance to be negative, right? So here we can write out what this means. Okay, and now from here, we have one more integral to integrate, right? So now we're wanting to do zero to three of our velocity function. So here we can split this into two integrals. First, we have zero to one of our velocity, and then we're adding on the one to three. And I'm doing this because we already found those results, right? We got our first integral was equal to 2.667 miles. And now we just found the second integral, which is equal to negative 2.667 miles. And so we end up getting that her entire distance is equal to zero, right? Because she started where she finished. And I decided to make the jogger a girl because I'm biased and I'm a girl. Okay, so now we want to find the total distance traveled between zero and three. So remember, in order to do that, we want to integrate the absolute value of our velocity function. So let's go ahead and do that. We can break this into two integrals, right? So here we get between zero and one. So here, since we already found those integrals, that's why I split it up again. But here we get 2.66 miles. And now we want the absolute value of negative 2.667, right? Because we want to find the total distance that she traveled. So here it's going to be 5.33 miles, right? And that is the total amount that this jogger ran. And so that's how our distance is diff different from displacement, right? So another application is the future value of a position function. So here we have an artillery shell that's fired directly upward with an initial velocity of 300 meters per second. So I'll write that down. B of zero is equal to 300. And we have a point 30 meters above the ground. So that's our initial condition for the position. So we get S of zero is equal to 30. Assume that the only, only the force of gravity acts on the shell with an acceleration. So we have acceleration is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I know it's negative because um, acceleration pushes down on us, right? It keeps us to the earth. So that's why it's negative. And we want to find the position of the shell after one minute. So 60 seconds. So here, what we want to do is we want to get our position function in order to find where the shell is at after one minute. So first, we have to start off with acceleration because that's what they gave us. In order to get velocity, I want to integrate acceleration. So negative 9.8. And we're integrating in terms of time, right? So here, when we do that, we get negative 9.8t plus some constant c. This is where we use the initial condition in order to find what that c value is. So let's go ahead and use v of 0 is equal to 300. So we get 300 is equal to negative 9.8 times 0 seconds plus c. And this tells us what our c value is equal to, and that is 300. So here we get our official equation is negative 9.8t plus 300. Now that we have velocity, we can integrate from velocity in order to get position. So here we have s of t is equal to the integral of velocity. So here when we do that, we get negative 9.8, and that becomes t squared divided by 2 plus 300t plus c. So let's um, simplify that one time. That becomes negative 4.9t squared plus 300t. The rest of this doesn't change. And now we're going to go ahead and use our initial position, which is s of 0 is equal to 30. So we have 30 is equal to negative 4.9 times 0 seconds squared plus 300 times 0 seconds plus c. And you can see that all of these, you know, go to 0. So we end up getting 30 is equal to c. So now we can have our official position function. So what we've done so far is we've integrated all the way from acceleration to position. And now we can answer the question. So we want to find the position of the shell after one minute, a.k.a. 60 seconds. Since we are in terms of seconds, of course, we want to plug in 60 rather than one. So that's a little trick right there. And right here, we end up on, you know, that's a calculator problem for sure, with 390 meters. And so, of course, there are other things that act on, um, like there's a pressure of the air that's fighting against the object, right? There's all these different things, the wind conditions that we don't take account for because we're just dipping our toes in some applications. So this doesn't include everything, but it is an application that we know how to do as calculus students. And as you learn more, like if you're going specifically into physics, you would learn how we can make this more and more advanced and more applicable to real life. 
So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more videos like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.